Bang! Needs Knives. I'm Jared, and we have the knife review of the Cold Steel Air Light. Um, thanks to Q-Ball for sending me this knife, uh, along with a whole bunch of other amazing knives. And this one happens to be an Aus 10A, made in Taiwan, G10 scales, and it is a backlock. All right, it's pretty simple. This, these knives, these cold steel knives, especially ones like this, are very simple and very, very affordable. Now, this knife is absolutely a flat grind. I'm not sure if they do have hollow ground versions, but this one is a flat grind. I've checked it, but on some of the descriptions, I noticed they said hollow grinds. They also come in Tonto versions. Um, also, you can get them a lot cheaper on Amazon than you can on Blade HQ and a lot of other sites. I'm going to put a link below. So if you do want to pick up one of these, whether or not it's the Tonto or the Drop Point version, I think both of them will be a great choice and I can recommend them. Um, the Tonto is an American Tonto blade shape. So um, yeah, definitely if you, if you want to get one, check out the links below. But yeah, just uh, just know that, um, you know, it might be a flat grind, not a hollow. But this is a great example of a tool, right? Um, there's lots of knives out there. All knives are basically tools aside from the art knives. But knives like this are made to be used or made to be abused. And when I say abused, I mean, this is the kind of knife you can rely on doing a little bit harder use, even though it is a lightweight because of this triad lock. The triad lock, arguably the strongest locking mechanism for a locking knife. Now, why is it so strong? Well, a, you know, the regular conventional um, back lock, you know, was a spring right here that would fall into the groove of the blade and it would just fall right in. Well, Andrew Demko, when inventing this lock, decided to put a stop pin in, which, you know, a lot of you guys might think, well, that seems very simple. But what it does is it makes three forms of contact. We have the pin here. You can see how this has like a, like a, an L shape, you know, where it's just a pin up and then it goes like this, has a groove that falls right behind this stop pin. And when it falls behind this, or when the blade hits the stop pin, now what it's doing is it's squeezing pressure behind the stop pin, basically always making the lock stronger. Um, even when you push on the spine, right? Even when you're pushing on the spine, the it's basically this is always wedging itself stronger and stronger into the stop pin stopping this from folding on you now in order to unlock it you have to push this button release that pin or spring away from the stop pin which now it will let it fall but you can slow roll it and you can actually hear the lock engage which is really nice you really hear that pop from the lock or you can just thumb flick it. If you're really good, you can reverse flick it because it does have a thumb stud that is screwable. You have a little flat head right there. Now this will work also for lefties because it is an ambidextrous knife with a reversible pocket clip. There is something about a back lock locking into place that's very satisfying. You know, every time when it's locked up, you hear it, you feel it, and it does have a little bit of, it is pretty satisfying knowing that ain't going nowhere. Now, let's talk about the action just a little bit more. Now, you have tension from the start. That's why it'll always come back into the handle once you overcome that to about right here. Now, it gets pretty smooth all the way up until right here, and then it basically locks itself in place really nice then when you unlock it i like to put my finger all the way up here because in this case they have a little spot right there for your finger to hit or for it to hit your finger so you don't have to worry about the blade coming down on your finger you just hold it up nice and high and i push the back lock swing it forward let it hit my finger and then i can swing it down 
or nicking my table, or I can just grab it with my thumb and pull it down. Very easy to use, and it's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I need to go any farther with that. Ergos and cutting. So this is a very thin knife, even though it is quite tall this direction. It's very thin. So it, it's it's going to be thin in the hand. It's not contoured. It is nice and flat. So it's not the most comfortable in the hand. No, it's not. And when you squeeze it, you really feel how thin it is. Uh, but, you know, it is a neutral grip, which is going to give you one, you know, a lot of... Um, uh, you know, like plate, like where the pressure pushes into your hand is going to be displayed all the way across your hand. And just like when you're push cutting, you know, for the actual push cuts, a lot of the pressure is going to be distributed across your palm. So in those cases, it, it works out great. Now for slicing, you know, it, it's going to be okay. It's going to be pretty comfortable. The blade thickness or the geometry, I should say, isn't the best, but it makes sense. So in a lot of ways, it makes sense. And in others, it doesn't. But it's going to be very useful, very good. It's okay. It's decent geometry. I'm not saying it's bad. So please don't take me wrong. I'm just saying it's 20 thousandths behind the edge. And it cuts very, very well. So cutting performance cuts really good. No issues with cutting. It has a beautiful blade shape and it is a flat ground blade. So the, the blade shape is going to work great for most tasks. You know, the drop point blade shape is just like a jack of all trades blade shape and the geometry works very well. So cutting performance is relatively good. Now the ergos with the cutting performance, as long as it is light to medium duty, it's going to be just fine. If you get into harder use, it's going to be a little less comfortable. Um, so, you know, you do have the jimping on the back of the spine that also locks you in place and it does work very, very well. Being the drop point blade shape, utility cuts are going to be pretty decent. You know, the tip does point down pretty good. It doesn't have a huge belly, just a little bit of belly, which is going to work out for utility cuts, draw cuts, opening things up, things of that nature. And it works fine. It works great. The tip's not too thick. It's not too thin. It's right around the the mid-range category so you're not going to have to worry about it breaking or chipping but you're also going to have a cute enough edge to where it works great now after using this thing uh quite a bit you know it is aus 10 aus 10 8 to be exact which is an okay steel it's a decent steel especially for this price category i find it to be very similar to vg10 154 cm you know steels like that so you know it's not going to have the craziest edge retention but it'll hold its own very well and be easy to sharpen nice and easy to sharpen very stainless you know it, it's a good quality steel especially for this price point now when we talk about the the sharpening it i did not sharpen this one but i did hone it because after i was done using it it would not cut paper like it, it did have uh quite a bit of nicks and stuff in the belly right here when i got it and then after using it quite a bit you know it's a you know needed just to be honed up so i took out my ceramic rod and i took a couple swipes down the ceramic rod knocked off some of those burrs realigned the edge then i used my urban edc strop or no yeah urban E urban edc strop yes my urban edc strop that i got from urban edc strops with a one micron um diamond compound and stropped it back up and then it was back to good and it was cutting receipt paper just fine there is one little tiny tiny nick in the edge but besides that i mean it's really good um so you know it, it wound up coming back very easy, which is going to be another benefit of OS 10A. It's going to strop and hone back, you know, very well and for quite some time before you have to put a new edge on it. In and out of the pocket. So it's slim. So, it, you know, it's not going to be a, a knife that's hard to carry, but it is still a full size knife. So even though it is lightweight and it is if you know um a thin knife you still have a full size knife in your pocket but the clip works great in and out of the pocket i don't mind it one bit it uh it's not very deep carry or anything but it does give you something to grab onto and pull in and out of the pocket the clip's tension is uh relatively strong 
so you're not gonna have to worry about it popping out of your pocket either but it works great in and out of the pocket no complaints um i don't mind it one bit and it feels nice and comfortable in the hand which is going to be the next benefit to it so since the clip works great in and out of the pocket and it is reversible it also is nice and flat where your hand goes right past it because it's not deep carry and deep carry you know if this had a deep carry clip it would be uncomfortable in the hand in this case it's not a deep carry clip so it's very very comfortable in the hand i don't even feel it so that's awesome now let's talk about some uh some negative things now if you think i'm going to complain about this choil you are wrong and you probably misunderstand what I'm talking about when I'm talking about plunge grinds because they did it right here because the thickest part of the blade right here, the plunge grind right here goes straight down to the edge or straight down to the grind. It doesn't taper from here all the way to here. It just goes from here straight down to the edge. So it makes it to where when you do sharpen it, you're not going to have to worry about a smile or anything like that. And you can always add a little notch like it comes with, with a little diamond file. Very, very easy to do. Anybody can do it at home and they're very, very cheap. They're about seven bucks. And with knives like this, with this type of plunge grind, it's very easy to put on. So no complaints about the choil. And, you know, it makes it to where when you sharpen, you can go all the way back to right here and sharpen, just like a spider co. Um, now, some complaints I do have. Um, I do like that they used big hardware for the pivot, but not for back here. So this is awesome that they did the, the big hardware for the pivot. But back here, it's T6s. I would prefer T8s. You know, these aren't really nice. People take apart very often, but still, I, I would prefer it. And since it's a reversible pocket clip, that'd be nice as well. Um, next little thing, I, I do think a boy dent, everybody always reminds me, the boy dent would have done this a little bit more justice because this has a strong back lock. Now, just that little, some people don't like the boy dent. I'm just saying I think it would have been nice because it would have made it just a little bit more comfortable to unlock. And it's not bad, but just, you know, that little tiny detail would have improved it just slightly. It is a little thin in the hand and it has a very strong lock. So the grind makes sense for the lock. I, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not saying it doesn't. The, the blade and the geometry make sense for this locking mechanism. Very strong lock, nice and strong blade. However, the ergos don't really match the two. Now, I'm not saying it's bad. It's not. It's fine. It'll get you by, and it's a tool. It's just fine. But if it was just slightly more thicker, or like where these edges were probably knocked down, because these edges are nice and sharp right here. So, like, just little things like that would have made it a lot more comfortable and would make you be able to use this grind appropriately. Um, now, in my opinion, I think a hollow grind would have done better on this knife um, since, you know, it is kind of a harder use knife without giving you the ergos for the harder use. So, you know, a little bit thinner uh, or the, the grind could have stayed the same thickness behind the edge, but maybe just a little bit of a hollow grind. Yeah, the, the blade wouldn't have been as tough, but it would have gave you a little bit better cutting performance for the ergos. And I'm not saying they are bad. I'm just saying, you know, what might have made it just slightly better. However, it's not bad and it works great. This is a fantastic work knife and a great example of a work knife. So I hope nobody's misunderstanding me. I, I you know, I agree. This is an amazing work knife and this is a knife you can, you can throw on your table. This is a knife you could, you know, throw in your tackle box, have around your workbench and, you know, know that you have a reliable tool. So the next thing that I would complain about really isn't much because it's a very simple knife and I respect where it comes from. I respect what kind of knife it is. I think this is a fantastic knife and I do recommend it. I recommend this knife as a work knife. I recommend this knife as a tool. And in that case, you know, it's, it's a great knife. Um, you know, uh, yes, I do think for the harder use tasks, the ergos are a little thin in the hand and a little sharp, you know, around the edges a little bit, but you know, that's not that big of a deal. And a lot of times you're going to be wearing gloves anyway. So, um, yeah, great knife. The grind or the satin finish doesn't like my camera, but 
Um, it is a beautiful satin finish. And it is so lightweight and easy to carry, man. This is a knife you can toss anywhere and know you have a reliable tool not very far away. There you guys go. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Cue ball. Thanks, brother. Peace.